Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever it might be for you. In today's devotion, we're examining the doctrine of the means of grace with a special emphasis on God's word as one of those means. The means of grace is the Bible's teaching that God offers and communicates to men the spiritual blessings purchased by Christ, namely the forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation, only through external means ordained by God. There's three such means, the word of God, the sacrament of baptism, and the sacrament of communion. Today we're especially going to be talking about the word of the gospel as a means of grace. One very important and likely familiar Bible verse that teaches this is Romans chapter 10 verse 17. It says, so faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. Now if you're a lifelong confessional Lutheran, you're probably thinking to yourself, well duh, of course God works through his word. Of course God creates faith through the preaching and hearing of his word, of course. That's how it happens. If that's the case, you're probably also unaware then that this understanding of how God works to create and sustain faith is actually rather unique to Lutheranism. Most Protestant churches, the Reformed, the Baptists, the Evangelicals, the non-denominationals, most of them don't believe what the Bible teaches about the means of grace. Now, most Christians will agree that the Bible is authoritative, and that it gives us accurate information about God's actions in history. But in the Lutheran Church, we see something else happening too when we, be, when we read the Bible, when we hear the Bible. It's a means of grace. The Word of God is a vehicle for God's undeserved love. The words of the Bible do not merely convey information, they convey the Holy Spirit. Think about it like a water tower standing high above the ground. How does the water get all the way from the tower all the way to your faucet at home? It goes through a series of pipes, right? Now think about God's grace in Christ as water in a tower. How does it get all the way into your heart and soul? It travels through the gospel in God's word and these two sacraments, baptism and communion, which we'll talk more about in the next two weeks. Another passage, Hebrews 12 verse 4 says, The word of God is living and active. The words of scripture actually connect us to what they are describing. As we read those words on the page of God's word, God is literally and objectively present in working, inscribing in our hearts the gift of faith. As our verse from Romans teaches, faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. Other Christian denominations think that we Lutherans are crazy for believing this. We're even accused of bibliolatry. Worship of the Bible rather than worship of God. But that's just an ad hominem attack. The Bible is clear. You were born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and abiding word of God. That's 1 Peter 2.23. So the doctrine of the means of grace teaches that the gospel heard in God's word, baptism and communion, is a conduit for God's love and forgiveness. How else could a person have faith in Jesus for the forgiveness of sins unless they receive it in the gospel? It's the only way. Of course, humans are naturally superstitious. We're naturally mystical creatures. People like to think of themselves as being spiritual but not religious, right? You've probably heard that. People like to receive signs from above in forms of fortuitous weather or spooky situations or lucky breaks as if God were speaking personalized messages to us through supernatural means. Well, God actually does speak personalized messages to us through supernatural means. It's called the Bible. And in this word of God, the Holy Spirit conveys the message of Jesus into your heart to create and or strengthen your faith. It's an incredible blessing. It means that every time you sit and listen to your pastor preach from the pulpit, every time you study your Bible, every time you read a devotion before you go to bed, God is at work in your heart, depositing the forgiveness of sins, life, salvation. It means that this book is the most powerful force on earth. In fact, Paul says in Romans 1, 16, the gospel of God is the power of God unto salvation. The Greek word for power is dunamis, from which we get our English word dynamite. That's right, the gospel, the good news of Jesus, substitutionary life and death is the dynamite that explodes inside our sinful, lifeless heart grants spiritual life for today and eternal life forever. And that, my dear friends, is what the means of grace is all about. Amen.